So just briefly, this is called the library. This is something that I've built over a couple of years. It's my personal collection of films, you know, uh, clearly. Uh, it's not... Not that big, right? So from left to right, we've got, of course, our criterions, and all these shelves are actually triple stacked to save room. I think this actually used to be an old shoe shelf from Payless or somewhere like that. Um, so I kind of tend to change my organizational patterns based off what day of the week or when I'm putting it up. You know, sometimes I'll put all the digipacks together uh, or I'll organize by director or by chronology or however you like. Just, you know, just try different stuff out. So we've got one and two and three and four four shelves, oh, five shelves of Criterions, six shelves of Criterions. I've, I've been collecting Criterions for about four or five years now. Um, below that, there's the penguin and the cat and the creepy, creepy face. I don't know where this came from. Um, we have our Arrow collection. And uh, back there with Arrow, just because of the width and the breadth and, you know, their subject matter. I find it easier to organize just by uh, the format of the releases themselves. So we've got digipacks or uh, their equivalents in the back. We have, of course, uh, just their regular slipcases up here in the front. Beyond that, we also have other labels. We've got uh, the older Jodorowsky releases, two of them anyway, uh, Blue Underground, Zombie, and then down below, part for the cheesecake bag, that's a good job. We have Shout Factories in the back, and coming up towards the front, we have uh, my own meager exploitation collection, uh, which I love, and I'm going to talk about in a further video because exploitation uh, is one of my favorite genres of film. Next to that, we have our own local Draft House Films label, uh, Vinegar Syndrome, Shane Carruth, Upstream Color, and uh, you know, you know. Anyway. Up here we've got uh, larger, big studio box sets mostly, uh, which I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of this one right here, this old boy ten. I'm a huge fan of that. I mean, I I also have the Arrow video release, which I believe is just Region B, but this too, just for the aesthetic alone, is also fantastic. It's just it's, uh, I I love I love big tin cases. I'm not crazy about steel books though, ironically. Um, let's move these out of the way. Oh, God. Uh, we also have down here, uh, we have Indicator in the back with their version of the Dietrich set, which I also have in Criterion as well. Uh, and then all of our uh, Kino collection, which includes uh, both their silent film restorations, uh, par excellence, and then their uh, Studio Classics label, which just recently, and I haven't gotten a chance to talk about this, just recently put out, one of my favorite films in the entire world by one of my favorite filmmakers, Lorenzo Zoyle. There's a beautiful, operatic, terrifying, one of the most honestly optimistic films you'll you'll ever see. Uh, and then beyond that, we've got Studio Canal, uh, Twilight Time, the one Twilight Time release that I have, and isn't it great that it's the birth of a nation, uh, which I also have in Kino right behind it as well. Uh, and then Intolerance by Cohen. I need to buy more of these releases from uh, Cohen and then Rare Video because they're a really good label as well. Um, and then down below, of course, we have just regular stuff like uh, favorite directors, which at some point I'll have to organize all this again because you, you know, George Miller at the back and then four where we've got Spielberg and so on. Newer releases and more favorable stuff. And now you can see how much of a George Miller madman I am with my VHSs down there. I used to have uh, Thunderdome and Eastwick as well, and Bay Pig in the City. Um, more specific stuff, comedies, musical stuff. You know, I, I love musicals. Uh, also love action films. I thought it was appropriate to get those two right next to each other. TV shows, kind of goofy stuff. This right here, you know, I decided it wouldn't make much sense to organize by director all the time so in certain places I go more for theme because I don't really have many films by these directors 
except for like the one, you know, uh, R Richard Rush, you know, uh, Vincent Minnelli, which I should have more films by Vincent Minnelli, but I don't um, yet. This is more goofy stuff. This is either comedies or r really, really terrible films or things that are just kind of interesting and off-kilter even for someone like me, like, uh, you know, Communion, which I don't think is a bad film at all. I really, really enjoy it, uh, especially with Christopher Walken's uh, very particular performance. Uh, Detention by Josh Trank, Rites of Passage, which, well, it's just, that movie's insane. <laughs> um, animated films, cartoons, TV shows, things like that. Spawn in the back, the HBO series, if you can see it, and then, of course, more general DVDs and things. So that's the collection. Uh, it's always growing, uh, or the library, rather, and there's a reason that I call it that, which I'll go into further in a different video. It's not just presumptuousness, I promise. Uh, but here's what I'm what I'm adding to it, or what I added to it this last week, and I've uh, I've refused to like put them up where they where they would go on the shelves until before I do this video. This is still kind of a new thing for me, so I'm still trying to get used to the procedures and the whatnots of doing it. So we'll just start from the top. From Arrow, and this is actually a Region A release. Uh, Fred's their release of Fred Zinnemann's Day of the Jackal which I've been interested in picking up for the longest time, but I always put it off every time that, like, there's a Barnes & Noble sale, a Criterion sale, because they also have Aero, uh, they also usually have Aero sales as well for either about the same discount or, like, slightly less. Like, sometimes it's, like, 30%. This is a rather stocked edition of, like, a really, really, really great thriller that I saw a bunch when I was a, you know, when I was younger. Um... Always had an appreciation for Fred Zinnemann as a director. Uh, this is not too stacked in terms of like supplemental content, uh, but there there are uh, some archival clips from the film set itself, and what I know is a very very long interview with uh, with a film critic uh, whose work is specifically about Fred Zinnemann. So I'm interested to hear him talk about that. So that's great. Um, then this. I've been wanting to, I actually ordered a long time ago, like a month and a half ago, uh, and then I guess the package got sent to a place I lived before, and uh, we're just going to leave that where it is. So, this is, uh, my arm's getting sore, uh, this is Arrow Video's Region B release, Arrow Academy of Children of Men, one of my favorite films, absolute favorite films in the entire world. So moving, so lyrical, so 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 innovative in the way it's shot. It's just, it's like probably one of the most fully realized, you know, uh, uh, visions of like a functioning dystopia on screen. And what I like about it is that it doesn't uh, just delve into easy cynicism and stuff. You know, there is that optimism at the end, which for me is like a really important thing in storytelling. I know it's not for a lot of people, but it is for me. Uh, I also, too, have a very interesting opinion about this film and V for Vendetta, which most cats are crazy about. You know, I think this film is a better adaptation of Alan Moore's graphic novel, at least in tone and texture and style, than the film V for Vendetta itself, which I is just garbage. But that's for another day. That's another video, as a matter of fact. Uh, this here uh, ports over most of the extras from the previous uh, Blu-ray studio release, but it also adds... Uh, new video appreciation by Philip Kemp. There is no future. Uh, we got a new audio commentary, which is going to be fantastic. It's a retrospective commentary, and those are always excellent. Uh, and we also got a new video essay by Kat Ellinger, Fertility and Progeny, which I'm really, I'm really interested to you know dive into. I also, on the previous release, never listened to Slaborzizic's, uh featurette, which I always wanted to, especially like when I came to know who he was later on. So. There's that. I'm excited to dive. You know, it's kind of a catchphrase now, but, like, I'm excited to dive in. Hey, hey. Oh. If I keep doing this, the production quality of these videos is going to get higher eventually, I promise. I'm not just going to be holding my phone camera in my hand. But for right now, um, 
Now, I don't have too many of these, but they tend to put out occasionally in this line uh, films that I'm interested or intrigued in, and they put them out in, you know, in fantastic releases. Uh, and this is, of course, High Noon. Another Fred Zinnemann film. Uh, I love High Noon. This is also one of my favorite films as well. It's, I mean, you don't have to say anything about this film. I mean, if you, if you, if you have seen it or you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Uh, it's one of the best westerns ever made. And this is a beautiful release. It comes in a, in a fantastic high contrast black and white slipcase, uh, with what looks like a good old fashioned, uh, well, a good old fashioned Criterion Blu-ray case or equivalent, um, Extras, new extras. These are all new extras, I believe. None of these have been ported over from the old DVD releases or the old Blu-rays even. Or Olive's old Blu-ray even. We have... I'm switching hands here. Oh. We have A Ticking Clock, which is about the editing, which I'm going to love. I love editing. Uh, we have Michael Schlesinger talking about uh, Stanley Kramer. Uh, getting into the production of High Noon and so on and so on. We've got Imitation of Life, which is about the uh, the blacklist aspect of its production, which is also reflected in this wonderful book right here, which in, with, which if anybody cares, you should really, really pick up. Uh, you know, we have uh, Production Histories with Stills, narrated by Anton Yelchin, and uh, an original essay by Sight and Sound editor Nick James. Uh this is going to be really fun to get into. So, oh yes. Um, we have, for a criterion, one that I've always wanted to pick up as well, but I wanted to see the film first because, you know, of Paul Thomas Anderson films, it's the only one that I haven't seen. So we got Punch Drunk Love, which I've finally seen. I, I, I love it. I love it. I had to add it to the collection immediately. Uh, this... Um, It's like switching back and forth. It just makes your arms sore. I'm sure everybody out there knows what I'm talking about. Uh, this actually ports over most of the extras from the previous uh, DVD release. The, uh, the, uh, 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 what are they called? The Scopitones, you know, deleted scenes, Mattress Man commercial. But we also get a new interview with, uh, with uh, Brian. We get a uh, new piece of uh, behind-the-scenes footage uh of the recording session of the film's soundtrack. Uh, we've got a new cur new conversation between curators Michael Connor and Lea Gangatino, Gangatino, Gangatano about the art of Jeremy Blake, which is used prominently in the film. Uh, press conference from 2002. So there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot to get into here. Uh, and I cannot wait to dive in. He said it. He said it. Um, yeah, I... I really hope Criterion gets more Paul Thomas Anderson films. I would like for them to get Hard Eight, which I know just recently got released in Australia by one of their imprint companies. But you know, I don't think I think the rights are up for grabs still in America, so I can't wait to see if they pick that up. Uh, yeah. Um, in keeping with uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, right here, um, what we have next are just really uh, a series of oh. We also picked up uh, the documentary Hitchcock Truffaut, which, you know, that I just, I've really wanted to see for a long time uh, because the book Hitchcock Truffaut was like one of my, you know, Bibles, as it, I'm sure it is for like every, you know, wannabe filmmaker, screenwriter, whatever you are, film critic, you know. <clears throat> and this, you've just got, I, I heard so many great things about it. And it's got, it's got, you know, Scorsese, Wes Anderson, David Fincher, Oliver Sayers, Dog, you know, Bogdanovich, Dog John uh, Paul Schrader, Richard Linklater. It's got everybody talking about how influential that book was to them, which I mean, that's just like, that, that's like that much of the people who, uh, you know, who hold that book up in such high esteem. And I mean, it's, it's like a landmark. I'm, I'm not saying anything that. You know is new here if you haven't read it go out and get it fast 
if you have an interest in this uh, this uh, strange medium that we're all either peripherally or ten, you know kind of involved in. Um, the rest are just um, the rest of my pickups this week <clears throat> are not quite as interesting. Um, they're all um, renewal copies, I guess, or just, you know, like buying new copies of things that like I've lost before, uh, you know, had since lost and now, you know, had to pick up because they're kind of essential for the library we've got, of course. Uh, these are all very, you know, heavily macho films, heavily, uh, 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 testosterone <clears throat> but also metatextual about it so I've got that uh, working for me which is nice um, we've got of course Ryan Gosling's Drives one of my favorite films in the world I don't know where I lost it but I lost it uh, hopefully that also gets a Arrow or a Criterion release one day it's a pretty exemplary example of a genre exemplary example that's kind of tautological uh, there will be blood in keeping with Paul Thomas Anderson as I said you know don't know where it went. Got it again. Jordan Peele's Get Out. This is this is this is a recent buy, even, and it still went missing. Um, within like the last year or so, uh, we have Us, which I I didn't think was as good. It was still pretty fantastic, but it wasn't as good as uh, the fan you know, the like landmark out of nowhere debut of Get Out. So now we've got uh, the duology. The Jordan Peele duology. Um, other pickups this week. Oh, there's only one that I really want to talk about. Oh, there's two that I want to talk about. So here's one. Uh, this is the reason that I'm talking about this is it's kind of like an underseen film. Uh, and it genuinely is an underseen film. You hear that word tossed around a lot. This one actually is underseen. This is Peter Weir's Fearless with Jeff Bridges, Rosie Perez, Isabella Rossellini. Uh, this is one of the most important films of the 90s. This and Lorenzo Zoyle, I don't know, maybe that shows my, my priorities, I, you know. Uh, but this is, it's about, you know, it's, a, it's about a guy who ends up surviving a plane crash. And he starts to, you know, and he, he, he figures out or he believes that he can't die. So he has no more fear in life anymore. He goes about changing his, his life and gets involved in the, in the, in the, the muck and the mire of, uh, you know, the, uh, the news stream about the plane crash. Uh, he gets involved with Isabella Rossellini, another fellow survivor of the plane uh, crash as well. Uh, his family life starts to kind of fall apart. Um, this is a... Oh, my God. This is, this is, a, this is an amazing film. And I, I, this is, I think, probably the only release you can get of it. There may be a Blu-ray release, I'm not sure, but either way, they don't really contain any kind of extras. This is just a good old-fashioned standard early DVD release. I really hope somebody does something with this at some point. It is a masterpiece, bar none. Uh, what else do we have here? It's interesting to talk about, you know. Um, trying to keep my arm from seizing up, you know, seizing up. Uh... Also, uh, renewed a lot of old uh, David Fincher DVDs or Blu-rays for prohibitively cheap, uh, like maybe $2 a pop right here, because um, once again, had it, lost it, gone. You know, I've, I've moved a lot in the last couple of years, so, you know, good to have him back. Um, oh, here we go. I picked this up, actually, the week before last. Uh, but just to show you that I'm not a, you know, totally, uh, 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 testosterone driven guy in my taste, uh, one of the other best films of the 90s, one of the other most important films of the 90s, uh, Alison Anders' wonderful gas food lodging about the lives of, uh, three women in a small Mexican town. Love this film so much. And this is by, of course, Arrow Academy. This is Region, uh, A as well, or Region 1, however you define that, uh, also, not the most stacked release in the world. It doesn't really seem like a lot of the Arrow Academy releases are super stacked in their single discs. Um, this is, uh, we get primarily on this, uh, a restoration in, in, uh, in sight and sound, of course, which I can't wait to delve into, because I've only ever seen it from a, 
from a VHS. That's how I used to watch it. Uh, this has uh, The Road to Laramie, a look back at Gas Food Lodging, which is an interview with Alison Anders and Josh Olson. Uh, and then we get a, ret uh, you know, a, uh, an archival documentary, Cinephile, Real Women, which uh, is about the struggles and the challenges of women in the film industry, the independent film industry in the 90s. Uh, and that's what we get. And I, I, I can't wait to watch this again. Of course, you also get Feruza Balk, Brooke Adams. Uh, it's, I love Alison Anders. Yeah. Um, I think that's about the size of it. So, uh, yeah, I've got some uh, other cool stuff that hopefully should be arriving next week. I hope, you know, fingers crossed, uh, that I can't wait to talk about. And at some point, I'm going to start doing videos where, like, I actually talk about these releases, uh, particular releases. Like, I, w I really want to do a whole video about the Ingmar Bergman set. I mean, you know, more than, I guess, what's been done before. Or even the Hellraiser box set, where I really uh, kind of delve into what's a part of each particular piece uh, from various viewpoints. But um, that'll be for a later day. I also have... Uh, some videos in the pipeline, very early in the pipeline. Uh, I used to be a film critic, and I'm going to try to do that here again, too. And I'm going to, you know, maybe try to pump out a, a, an honest-to-God video essay like you see everybody doing. Uh, but I'm going to try to not make it as dry as a lot of the ones that you see uh, around the web with the same slow voice that's right. I try so hard to sound academic. I, you know, I just I, I can't do that because I I don't sound academic at all. Anyway, that's coming down the pipeline at some point if you're watching this at all. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, I'll see you then. Bye.